Okay, this is the story of a dream and an invention. And it started out as a dream when I was a kid, became an invention later, and then became something that seemed impossible and finally a reality. Uh, and a lot of people already know a lot of this story, so all the parts I've already shown before, I'm, I'll just try to zoom through real fast. Okay, let's go! And no, I'm not always this animated. But I feel like the story would be kind of boring if I just talked like this the whole time. In 1975, I was born, and I looked just like Guru from Dragon Ball Z. When I was five, for one dollar, I bought an electric motor. Oh, and I started building. So I put a propeller on the motor, and made a fan car, and then I made a car with a rubber band drive, which was better, because it had traction. And then I found gears, and you could make cars with four and eight and sixteen wheel drive that could climb over things and it was awesome and then the gears led me to more levers and complex things and I was making things that would walk around and not just walk straight but do steering and everything and eight legs and I made one of these when I was 12 and it was on the news for at some science competition and I wish I could find the footage from that that it's like 24 years old there's no if anyone knows where that is it was in Hamilton Ontario you know like 24 years ago. Anyway. Then in 1999, 13 years ago, my brother introduced me to this cool cartoon that was pretty cool until these things showed up. Then it was, whoa, super cool. And I was looking at it thinking, oh, I can totally make that. But you know, there's one thing to make it with a motor in every single joint and have 18 different motors and like hundreds of gears and have all these different motors and gears that could break. Ah, but I wanted to make it with fewer motors and make it more more robust and another problem with putting lots and lots of motors in is that it's great if you want it to be able to dance and do all kinds of different things but if it's if you just want some walking motion there's got to be clever ways of way reducing the weight and using clever mechanisms to uh, make it walk around and I wanted one that would just walk and <clears throat> one of the problems with motors everywhere is that at any one point in time, you'd maybe have a quarter of the motors working, and the rest of them would all be dead weight. But if you can put one motor in, that would use some clever differential mega mechanisms to deliver the power to the legs that it needs, that need it, uh, then you wouldn't have to have all this dead weight. You just have a motor that is the, the power needed to operate the thing. Plus, there's tricky little ways you can make it spring-loaded so it hardly takes any power to move the thing. But that's a whole separate issue. Now, the way I wanted it to walk was I didn't want it to, to have to like steer the whole body around to walk somewhere. I wanted it to just be able to go this way and be able to go that way and be able to go that way because that's way cooler. And I thought if I made this top part just rotate and aim a certain direction, then it could, uh, it could line stuff up in the, in the middle and walk any direction just by rotating this top part. So that was my stipulations, and I did some thinking, and then I scribbled out uh, lots of stuff on some paper, and I spent a few days trying to figure it out and kept coming up with complicated ways to do it, and then I was like, okay, let me put this aside, and I'm going to go do some running and some swimming and, and just go, go do some life. Then about a month later, I was like, doing something? I don't even remember what I was doing. But I was just hanging out, and then suddenly I was like, Oh, I know how to do that thing! And I had to run over to my paper and scribble it down. And I had the idea, and a week later I had this monstrosity of coat hangers and duct tape that was like this, but it looked more like garbage. But it totally worked, and it wasn't very stable and wasn't a very good one, but it was good enough to prove that the, the thing I designed worked. Now the trickiest concept was to get a really simple motion to get different legs to do opposite motions, right? <clears throat> now I can explain the, how this works in the knee joints. And then if you look at the knee joints in the things, some of them, you have to look closely to notice, some of them are piv pivoted like this, so that you go like this, and when you push forward, the foot goes the opposite direction. Pull back, the foot goes out, right? It's reversed. Some of them are pivoted like this, so if you go forward, it goes forward, goes back, it goes back. So you get two opposite motions from the same thing. And it gets a little more complicated than that. But that's the basic thing that makes the whole thing work. And I don't have any video or pictures of the original, original one. It's sitting on a shelf in my house somewhere. I probably have a picture of it somewhere. But I do have video of the one I made 
Ah, about a month later. Then I went back about my life for a while, and a couple months later I made this one. And each time I made a new one, it uh, made little improvements and things. Then for a while, life just happened. I won me some races, I built me a house, you know, with a trampoline inside it, of course. Then sometime in early 2006, I made this. And if you click on here, it makes a video show up, but I'll just click on this one back here. And this is the first one that was all slick and radio controlled and had little battery compartments and fancy things like that. And I always referred to these things as spider tanks. And this was the fourth version, the Spider Tank Mark IV. And over the years, I showed this and various other robot -y inventions to people who worked in the toy industry. And they'd always say, wow, that's really cool, but we don't really know what to do with it. The word no gets tiring real quick. Then through my YouTube videos, I met this guy who's totally a toy inventor. And he's like, dude, just make a video and send it to some toy companies. What do you have to lose? So I sent this video to a bunch of toy companies and two of them asked to see the actual prototype. And I was a little, little nervous about that because I hadn't shown anyone how it actually worked yet. And I know how, you know, secrets work in the corporate world. But there were non-disclosure agreements and everything and I was like, okay, let me send this thing. So both toy companies had very similar responses. Wow, this is really fun to play with and we love it, but it doesn't fit into our marketing scheme. Sorry. <sighs> All right, fine. Now, I didn't find out this next part until a while later, but coincidentally, at this exact time, someone managed to develop the exact same thing I built over in China. So that, coupled with various other nefarious sounding coincidences, made me start to think that Maybe it wasn't just coincidence that it also took them two weeks to mail my prototype back to me. <sighs> but what am I going to do about that? Even if I could prove some sort of nefariousness, I'm not going to spend half my life taking people to court and fighting them and all this blah blah blah. Ugh, I don't want that life. That sounds terrible. So I thought about it. Well, at first I was just annoyed for a while. Really annoyed. Ugh. Disgusting people. Ugh. But then I figured, okay, look, Jamie, you gotta figure out <clears throat> the positive way to get through this kind of situation. It's kind of like getting smacked in the face really hard, but whatever. Maybe there's some, something I can do. Then I realized that the kind of person who would take someone else's idea and copy it and say, look at my thing, look what I've made and they just stole it from someone else. That person's never gonna turn even a, an awesome, awesome stolen idea into something great because they don't have the motivation and the, just the, the awesomeness inside them. All they have is bleh. So I realized all I have to do is make my thing so amazingly super that it blows any copies out of the water and stomps them into smithereens. Whatever smithereens are, I hope it's not good to be stomped into them. Then these guys sent me a message and said, dude, we want to make some of your robots. And I was all like, really? Really, really? really? Or, yeah, maybe? For real? And they were like, yeah, totally. And at first they weren't interested in the spider tank. They were interested in a bunch of other robots. But after a little while, they were like, wait, what about that spider tank thing? Let's check that out. So I sent them my prototype. I sent it to WoW stuff. And they took it to their engineers and said, Hey guys, make a new prototype out of this, one that we can manufacture. And if we go in my top secret folder here, we get to see all the fancy videos that I haven't been able to show yet. Shh.